Bipedality is one of the most fundamental hominin traits and one of the most important to understand. There are a lot of potential models as to why bipedality emerged in humans. A number of them involve breaking up of African tropical forests and a gradual increasing patchiness and eventually increasing openness of East African environments. We're here to demonstrate some of the potential evolutionary advantages to being bipedal. One of the things that's been postulated for the origin of hominins is that hominins became diurnally active, meaning they were active during the day, and active during the day in increasingly open environments. There are several advantages to being bipedal in such a situation. One of them is that it's easier to stay cool if you're bipedal during the day in a hot and water-limited East African environment. When you're bipedal, most of your body is away from the ground. The ground itself, if you get close to it, you can feel reflects solar radiation and solar heat. So by moving away from the ground, you move into a slightly cooler environment. You also take advantage of the fact that there's breezes away from the ground as well to reduce heat, particularly in the context of a hairless hominin and one that's sweating more. So potentially, being bipedal makes it easier to maintain your thermoregulatory environment in an open air, hot East African environment. There's an added advantage to being bipedal in this context too. There are a lot of predators in the East African environment. Early hominins were not big. They were not necessarily capable defenders of themselves. By being bipedal, it gives you a higher point of vision with which to view the environment. All this tall shrubbery around me is not unlike the tall savanna grasses that we find in East Africa. Being bipedal allows me to see over them as opposed to being tucked beneath them. There are other potential models as to why bipedality emerged as well. One of them has to do with simply the evolutionary background of humans. If we were coming out of a forest environment, if we developed out of tropical African ape kind of a forest environment, we might have already had a very orthograde posture, meaning an upright posture. When you watch primates moving through the trees, you can see that they're regularly in an upright posture, especially if it's a small-bodied early hominid ancestor, one that was a bipedal within the context of trees, it might have been an above branch walker. Rather than a quadrupedal stance above branches, it might have already occupied an above branch position to move about, especially amongst perhaps distal limb segments, where using one arm to hold onto an above branch, it could maintain resources beneath it. So one possibility is that bipedality emerged within a forest environment. There are other advantages potentially to being bipedal though. Chimpanzees and other apes, again, regularly engage in some form of bipedal motion. When they do, it's usually because they're carrying something. There's lots of video of early chimps at Gombe carrying bananas away from a provision pile. And when they do so, they grab the bananas and they run away bipedally. Oftentimes in natural settings, we'll see chimpanzees grab a stick and thrash it against the wildlife around them. The reason is they're making a display threat. But again, being bipedal frees up your hands to do those activities. One of the areas that we most commonly use our hands to carry things is in carrying babies. Our babies can't really hold on to us very well. As a parent of a five-month-old, I can testify to the need to hold babies regularly. So carrying and the ability to free up your hands to do carrying activities, whether it be food, whether it be tools, whether it be babies, is one potential advantage of being bipedal. Another advantage of potentially being able to carry things, coupled with potentially a decrease in the size of forest patches within East Africa, is that if resources are distributed across different forests, or you're engaged in different activities in different forest patches, even if you're primarily still of the forest, you can carry objects from one forest patch to another forest patch. So bipedality might have allowed early hominids to transport resources from one forest patch to another forest patch. So there are a number of potential reasons as to why bipedality may have emerged. It's important to note that all these reasons are not mutually exclusive. It could have been some combination of these reasons that truly explains why bipedality emerged. It's also important to note that these models for why bipedality emerged allow us to test hypotheses in the fossil record. For example, predicting that bipedality emerged within an arboreal context as a result of above branch walking would mean that we would expect to find the earliest signs of bipedality in hominid fossils recovered from forest settings. Expecting bipedality to be mainly a thermoregulatory adaptation would mean that we would expect to find the earliest signs of bipedality within an open environment, one in which there was more selective advantage for being bipedal. So, our model of bipedality gives us a mechanism to create hypotheses and predictions that we can then test within the fossil record. 